let's start with the concept of um, simple interest. So there's two types of interests that you can get. One of them is simple interest, which pays lower. The other one is compound interest, which pays more. So let's see what the differences are. It's pretty simple. All right, so here we're investing 3240 at 2.4%. This symbol slash means uh, per, and that A means annum, which means like per year or annually. And what else is going on? Calculate the interest earned per year. All right, it's very simple. The interest from a simple interest earned is equals to the principal amount times the interest rate. So this is your P, this is your R. So I is equals to P times R. So 3240 times 0 0.024. Um, that's in percent to go from a percent to a decimal, just divide by a hundred. So that 2.4% becomes 0 0.024. It has to be in this decimal form to use this formula. So 30 to 40 times 0 0.024, that is going to be $77.76. So that's the answer to part A. The interest earned, just use this formula. I is equals to PR. Calculate the amount and the total interest earned after 20 years. All right, for this one, what we do is this is the interest made per year. How can we find the interest made over 20 years? So what's happening here is that every year we're getting this amount of money added to the principal. So over the period of 20 years, how many times do we add this? You multiply it by 20. All right, so the total interest over 20 years is gonna be 20 times this annual interest, 77.76 times 20, that is 1555.2. So that's the total interest earned over 20 years. We wanna find the amount. Amount is the principal plus the interest. So the principal was 3240. This is our interest value, which is add them up, 3240. That gives us 4795.2. That's the answer to part B. The amount becomes 37, uh, 4795, and the interest over 20 years is 1555. Part C, determine the total amount and the interest earned if he invested. Okay, C is just asking us for the formula. And this is these are the formulas that we use. The interest is P times R times T. That's what we did here. We did T, the time, 20 years, times P times R. So this is the formula for interest. I is equals to PRT. The formula for amount is simply principal plus interest. So you can rewrite this as P plus PRT. You can take a P out if you want, which becomes one plus RT. So this is the formula for amount and this is a formula for interest. Cool? Mm -hmm. Notice how we're adding one number every year. So let's say initially you have $100. After one year, we're adding $10. After two year, we're adding 10 more dollars becomes 120, 130, 140. So this is the bank balance and this is the year. Is this arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. Right, because we're just adding the same amount each time. So is this a linear function or an exponential function? 
linear linear function that's right so this one this is your amount this is your time your y intercept here would be the principal you start with some principal amount and then you keep adding something each time as time goes forward and what you're adding is the interest so that is your common difference common difference is the interest So here, we're, Tina is borrowing 15,000 at 6.8% per annum, simple interest. She plans to pay back the loan in 10 years. Calculate how much she will owe at the end of each year during this period. So what are they asking us? What's the unknown here? So we're given the principal amount, the initial amount. Principal just means the initial amount. We're given the time. We're given the rate as a decimal becomes 0 0.068. The formula for interest is PRT. The formula for amount is P1 plus RT in a bracket. What do you think this question is asking us? It's asking us for the interest. It's asking us for the yearly interest. Mm -hmm. So in one year, at the end of the first year, she will owe 15,000 times 0 0.068. So the interest annually is just principal amount times R. This represents the total interest over 20, 10 years. That I, if you use this formula, that'll be the interest over 10 years. This A represents the final balance or the final amount after 10 years. This question is asking us for the interest at the end of each year. So that's just the principal amount times the interest rate. So 15,000 times 0 0.068, that becomes 1020. So this is the answer to this question. How much will she owe at the end of 10 years? She owes 1020 per year. How much will she owe after 10 years? Well, it's just going to be this times 10. Mm -hmm. So after 10 years, it's just going to be that yearly amount times 10. So it's going to be 10,200, which means after 10 years, the amount is going to be principal plus interest. So 15,000 plus 10, 1, 200. So that's 25,200. That's going to be the final amount after 10 years. You can also use this formula. A is just P1 plus RT. So it's 15,000 times one plus the rate times time. And that should also give us 25,200. Let me double check. One plus 0 0.068 times 10. Yeah, it gives us the exact same amount. So this question is not asking us for any of this. This question is just simply asking us for this value. The end of each year, she will owe 1020. After 10 years, she will owe this, which means the amount that she will owe is 25,200. And that's it for this question. It's just a linear function that's slightly modified. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's not too bad.
simple interest is just you're just adding the same thing. You don't even need formulas. You can just, if you wanted to, you can brute force this by using a table. By that, I mean after the end of first year, this is your deposit. One year later, we're adding 1020, so 1620. Second year later, we're adding 1020 again like this. You can go like this. And after 10 years, you will get 25,200. Let's look at this one. So Philip borrows uh, 540 for 85 days by taking a cash advance on his credit card. The interest rate is 26% per annum simple interest. How much will he have to pay back? And how much interest will he have paid? So what is this question asking us? Given the principal amount, or given the time and days, or given the interest rate, what is our unknown? What are we trying to find? How much he needs to pay back. So which letter denotes that? It's A, the amount. So here, the interest over the time period is going to be P times R times T. This is a formula for interest. Just multiply the principal rate and time together. So the principal is 540. The rate is 26% or 0 0.26 per annum per year. So the units of this rate right now is per year. But the unit of time is in days. So we need to either convert this into days or we convert the time into years. Because right now the units are not matching up. One of them is annually, the other one is per day. So now the question is, how many years are there in 85 days? How do we convert days to years? You can also think of this. Divide by 365. Yeah, exactly. You need to divide that by 365 because, well, because the units need to match up. Cool. You just mm -hmm. plug this in and that'll give you your total interest over that period, which is $32.70. So that's your interest. To find the principal amount, the, um, oh, sorry, the final amount that he needs to pay back, it's principal plus I. So it's going to be 540 plus 32.70. So that's 572.70. So that's how much he owes after 85 days. Okay, that's it for this mm -hmm. question. The only tricky thing here was to convert the, the days into years. So we're given the initial amount, the invested amount, that's 4850, so that's our principal. We're given the interest rate per year, so that's good as well. How would you denote this 8,000? Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's going to be your A. So what's missing? What is the question asking us? T, right? How long means they're asking us for the time. 
So now T is missing. The formula for A is either P plus I. We don't really have I. So we can't use that. The other one that we can use is P one plus RT like this. This is the formula for amount. We're looking for T. So let's plug everything in. It's just a linear equation. A is 8,000. P is 4850. 1 plus R is 0 0.076. And T is T. How do we solve this linear equation for T? You divide by 4850. OK, let's do that. So 8,000 divided by 4850. And then that... you one. Uh, 97 minus 1. And then you divide again. So that will be that divided by 0 0.076. So T is 8.55 years. So there we go. That's the missing component. It's just a simple linear equation. You just need to know the formula. There's only two formulas, really. Interest is PRT. An amount is principal, 1 plus RT, which is the same thing as principal plus interest. Those are the formulas for this. Simple interest. Let's see if there's any dicey questions here. I don't see any letters. Maybe we'll do this one. That A there um, stands for application. These are usually the best problems to do. All right, so here we're not given much. We're given a table. Question A asks us, how much did she borrow? Um, oh, it's the letter that denotes that unknown in part A. P? P, yeah. So A, we're looking for P. So this amount here is the amount after one year. This is the amount after two year. The question is, at time zero, what's the amount? That's going to be our principal. Initially, what was the amount? Any ideas on how to find this? I'll give you a hint, OK? Remember, it's a linear function. The hint is that you're just adding the same thing over and over again. Here's your principal. We don't know what that is. But at time one, we know our amount is 2081.25. Whatever we added from here to here, we add the exact same amount from here to here at time two. It's a linear function. So whatever you added here, you're adding the same thing here. So you can do A2 minus A1. What will that give us? Will that give us P or will that give us I? I? Yeah. So I would be A2 minus A1. So 2312.50 minus 2081.25. Two three one two point five minus two zero eight one point two five. That's gonna be two three one point two five. So using this, how do we find the principal? You subtract i from a one. Yeah. So p is gonna be a one minus that interest amount. So two three two zero eight one point two five minus that gives us eighteen fifty. So our principal amount at time zero is 1850, the answer to part A. Part B, state the total amount as the general term 
of a sequence. Okay. So part B is asking us general term. This is the formula and we know this is a arithmetic sequence. A plus N minus one D where A is the principal amount, the initial amount, the money at time zero. So this one, we already have all the ants, all the numbers that we need. The initial amount is 1850. Whenever we're talking about the general term, we don't know what N is, N is just N, but we do know what D is. D is the common difference, like that. So this will be the answer to part B. Just plug what you know into the general um, sequence formula for an arithmetic sequence. Part C, how much time will have passed before Anita owes $7,500? Now, what are we looking for? T. We're looking for T. The formula for amount is principal plus interest amount is $7,500. Um, the principal is $1,850, right? Mm -hmm. And our I, now there's two variations of I. This is the I per year. Here, are we using the I per year or the total I over the time period? We're using the total I. We're using the total I up over the time, which we don't know yet. So here, I is going to be 231.25 times T. And you just solve this for T. Subtract 1850, divide by 231. It cannot just be 231 because that's never going to add up to 7,500. So we're probably multiplying something with 231, and that's our missing component, T. So here we do 7,500 minus 1850 divided by 231.25, which gives us a time period of 24 years. And that's the answer, 24.4 years. So that's a long time. Right here, Len invests $5,200 at 3%, while Dave invests less principal at a higher interest rate, 3600 at 5%. How long will it take for Dave's investment to be worth more than Len's? All right, so for this one, we're just going to visualize it. We have Len who's investing a higher principal at a lower interest rate. That's just going to be our slope. So this is going to be len. The interest rate is lower. On the other hand, we have Dave, who, who has a lower principal amount, but his interest rate is higher, like that. So this is for Dave. This is for len. How long will it take for Dave's investment to be worth more than Lens? So what's the unknown here? What are we trying to find? When the two lines intersect. Right, so we're trying to find the T value, the, the time. And these are the amounts. We have the amounts on the Y axis. And we have the time period on the x-axis, and we want to find t. T's are unknown. How do we find t? This is also called the point of intersection. How do we find the POI between two straight lines? Mm 
you set them equal to each other, yeah? Mm -hmm. What you do is you do the amount of Dave, the amount Dave makes is equals to the amount Len makes. The formula for A is P1 plus RT. So for Dave, it's going to be 5,200 times 1 plus 0 0.03 T because R is 0 0.03 and T's are unknown. What's the equation for Len? What goes on the right side of this equation? Three thousand six hundred times what? One plus zero point zero five. Yeah, zero point zero five t. All right. Again, we have a linear equation here. How would we solve this? Basically, what we need to do is we need to group up these t's, the like terms. They're not on the same side of the equation right now. So we need to simplify it and group the like terms together. You open up the brackets? Yeah. And that's going to be a smart 5200. Plus, what's that? 156, 5200 times 0 0.03, 156t. So equals to 3600 plus 18t. 3600 times 0 0.05. Yeah. Subtract 156 from both sides or take it to this side becomes 24t. Move this to this side becomes 1600. Therefore, T is 1,600 divided by 24. It's 67 years. So what's the answer to this question? It's after 67 years. Mm -hmm. Because at exactly 67, they're dead even. Before 67, you want to go with Len. After 67, you want to go with David. Cool? Mm -hmm. Very unreasonable, though. 67 years is a long time. This is not how it usually works. What you're better off doing with this money is you can just put it in like a stock exchange. And that'll pay you probably 100 times more over 67 years. Usually with a good investment, okay? Usually with a good investment, not a rule of thumb or whatever, but maybe, maybe a rule of thumb, not applicable to every case. You want to double your money within six years. So... 67 years gives you, what, 11 doublings. Look at this. So this amount of money, okay, this amount of money goes through 11 instances of doubling over 67 years. So what does that money become? Again, it's not reasonable at all, but this is what it becomes. And as you can imagine, this is probably in the, what, billions, 2 power 11, times 5,200, not quite a billion, but it's $10 million. So yeah, this is way better than just putting it in a bank account at 3% simple interest. All right, so Sarah's parents decide to invest $500 on each of her birthdays from the day she was born. 
So let's say today she's born, time zero, her bank balance is 500. At time one, it's 1,000. At time two, it's 1,500, like that. Each investment earns 6.4% simple interest. What will be the total amount of investments when Sarah is 25? All right, so what what is this question asking us? What is our missing component? A. A is our missing component. We have time, 25 years. We have our interest, 0 0.064. So A will be something like this. It's going to be 25 times 500. This is the total amount that they've put in by themselves. This is a raw amount. And on this raw amount, you get paid 0 0.064 over the period of 25 years. So this is actually your principal. And this entire thing is your interest, where this is your principal, this is your R, and this is your T. So the formula to use here is P plus PRT, which is the same thing as P1 plus RT. This is the formula for amounts. And you plug that in and you'll be good for this question. So this one's slightly trickier because they're adding things every year as they go. And so far, every single question, people weren't adding anything as it was only the interest that was compiling. But here they're adding principal every single year as well. This is called something called annuity, which we will see in a little bit. It's a lot more difficult. Well, this one's not that difficult because this one's with simple interest, but usually annuities are with um, compound interest, which is geometric sequence, exponential functions. Let's look at an example of something that is not compound, sorry, simple interest. So that means you're not adding the same amount of money each time. That means your D value is not the same. It changes. So Lara's, Lara, Lara, whatever, 5,000 was invested at 4.8% compounded quarterly. Okay, so, um, all right, let's, let's just say this is compounded annually to begin with. When she was born, how much money will the investment be worth on her 21st birthday? All right, here's the difference between compound interest and simple interest. In simple interest, when time was zero, this was 5,000. And the interest is simply 5,000 times 0 0.048. So we're going to be adding this amount every single year. So that's 240. So after time one, it's going to be 5240. After time two, it'll be add 240 to this like that. Time three, it'll be add 240 to that like that. So at the end of 21st birthday, we are adding um, 0 0.048 times 21st. So at 21st birthday, it's going to be 1040. So we just added 240 at the end of each year. That is simple interest. Compound interest at time zero, it's 5,000. The principal doesn't change. At time one, we added 240. 
that also doesn't change for compound interest. Now, what changes is that at time two, instead of adding 240, we add the interest accumulated on this principal. So here, what we add is we do 0 0.048 times 5240. And that's the difference. Over here, your interest that you get paid is dependent on the initial amount, on the principal amount alone, never changes. But here, the interest that you get paid depends on the amount the year before. So you will most certainly not be adding the same thing over and over again. So here we add 252. So this becomes 5492. Here we would add 0 0.048 times this amount, which is 263.62 and whatever that is. So the interest that you get per year changes because you get interest on the interest. Whereas over here, you all, you're only getting interest on the initial principal, but over here, you get paid interest on the interest itself. So the interest compounds, that's where the name comes from. It adds up on top of itself. So using this, let's see if this was compounded annually, how much money would this person make? So the formula is gonna be different now. The formula for compound interest is this. Last time it was P, for simple interest, it was P, one plus RT, linear function, but now here it's this one. A times principal, one plus I to the power of N. I represents the interest rate and represents the time in years, which was R and T when we did simple interest. Now those two letters become I and N. So if this is being done annually, all you do is you plug this into this formula. Principal is 5,000, one plus I is 0 0.048, and N is 21 years. So 5,000 times one plus, or 1.048 to the power of 21, which is 13,383.11. So that is if you do it annually. As you can see, it's way more than the 10,000 that you would have gotten from simple interest. Now this question asked us compounded quarterly. Hmm. Now what changes? So if the thing is not being compounded annually, a lot of things change. Quarterly means how many times a year? Four times. Four times. So what we do with these guys is if it's done quarterly, your I will change and your N will change as well. So over here, your I was as you saw it. If it was done annually, your N was as you saw it as well. But if you're doing it quarterly or semi-annually or whatever, it's going to change. We know quarterly means four times a year. This interest is compounded. What does per A mean? What does this mean? That 4.8% is per year, okay? Per mm -hmm. annum. So if it's being done quarterly, then that interest rate will go down. So your interest rate, this is also called the M value. M is going to be 4 you divide that by four. So your interest rate is actually 0 0.012. N means the number of compounding periods. You divide the interest rate by M, you multiply the N by M like this. And then you use this formula. I mean, we shall see that this is gonna become way more than 13,000, I think. The formula is the same. The only difference is I and N now have changed because we're doing it quarterly. So 5,001 plus 0 0.012 to the power of 84. And usually the more compounding periods you have, 
the higher money that you make because you get more opportunities to earn in interest on itself. So 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.012 to the power of 84. which gives us 13,618.62. So it's a little bit higher than compounded annually. So this is the difference, okay? Mm -hmm. Is this making sense? Yes. Compound interest, you get interest on itself, adds up quicker. It's an exponential function. On her 15th birthday, so when time is zero, she was 15, she put in $10,000, which was compounded at 8% per annum monthly until, yeah, so she left it till she was 65. So this is for Trudy. At 15 years of age, she put in $10,000 and she left it till 65. So what's our T value? How long, how many years have passed from 15 to 65? Just subtract them, 40 years. So Trudy leaves it in her bank account for 40 years. And now the question is how much money did she make here? The other individual, Lena. Isn't it 50 years? You're right, it's 50. The other individual, Lena, put in when she was 45 till she was 65. So what's the time period for Lena? 20. 20. So she also put in the same amount. And both of the interest here is being compounded monthly. All right. So let's see the amount for Trudy. For T Trudy, the amount is, what's the formula? Principal one plus I to the power of N. But now remember, this is being compounded monthly. So what do we do with that 0 0.08? Do we divide this or do we multiply this? by 12. You divide? Yeah, so the interest rate you will divide because that interest rate is per year. Since it's being done monthly, you need to divide that interest rate by 12. The compounding peers, on the other hand, you will multiply that by 12 like this. So 0 0.08 divided by 12, it's a weird number. It's one over 150. 50 times 12 is 600. So using this formula for Trudy, she will make 10,000 times one plus, our interest rate is one over 150 to the power of 600. And check this out. 538781. So this is the kind of money you should expect to see over a period of 50 years. That's for the first lady. For the second lady, it's going to be the same thing, except the only difference is for Lena, the N value will be different. So the formula is the same. The only difference is that N for her is 20. So it's going to be 20 times 12. 240. Interest rate is still 8% divided by 12, 1 over 150. So for Lena, her amount will be 10,000, 1 plus 1 over 50, 150 to the power of 240. So 1 plus 1 divided by 150 to the power of 240 times 10,000. 
So that is only 49,268.02. Well, that's the answer here. You just subtract the bottom one from the top one. So 53878.1.83 minus the answer. So the first lady, Trudy, has made this amount of money more than Lena. And that's the end of this question. And that's how it works in real life as well. Um, usually, you put a small portion of your paycheck into your pension plan. That's for when you retire. And as you can imagine, over time, over a period, because usually people start working at 18 and they retire at 60. Not for not for everyone, but usually this is for most people. I would say maybe for 90% of the people, this is how it is. So your interest will be compiled for a 42 years, yeah? Mm -hmm. So as you can imagine, even a small amount of money over mm -hmm. a period of 42 years is going to grow exponentially. It's going to skyrocket. Some people don't stop at 60, though. People, I mean, these days, the life expectancy is going higher and higher. So maybe 65 even, which will give you 47 years. Some people start working at 16. So I'll give you 49 years, as you can see. The higher this time period, the higher this will grow. And it grows exponentially. So time is very good. The more time that you invest, the better it is. Nicholas has $1,000. How long would it take for his investment to double? All right, so part A is 5% simple interest. Part B is 5% compound interest. Which? What's our prediction? Which one do you think would grow quicker? B. All right, so this is our formula for simple interest. Our principal is 1,000. If it doubles, what's going to be our amount? Well, it'll be 2,000, right? Mm -hmm. 1 plus R is 5%. T is our unknown, like that. Divide both sides by 1,000. 1 plus 0 0.05 T is 2. 1 is 0 0.05 T. T is 20 years, I think, yeah. So it's a long time for your money to double. You're better off probably just spending that money than investing it into this. Or invest it into literally anything else. Now, on the other hand, we have compounded semi-annually. Our interest is 0 0.05. Semi-annually, how many times is that per year? Twice. So you divide this by two. Your time period, we don't know what that is, yeah? Mm -hmm. But we know we need to multiply that by 2. So 2n here and 0 0.025 here. Our formula is principal 1 plus i to the power of n. Principal is 1,000. Final amount is 2,000. 1 plus 0 0.025 to the power of 2n. Remember, you need to multiply your compounding periods. Even though it's unknown, multiply that by 2. But now this is a little bit tricky because now our unknown is in the exponent. How do we solve this equation for n? And it is most definitely not linear. You use marks. Use logs. That's right. So log 2, the answer would be log 2 divided by log of 1.025 equals 2n. Actually, you need to divide that by 2. So log 2 divided by log of 1.025. And whatever you get, you divide that by 2 because there's a 2 here. So the n is 14 years. So this one considerably quicker. And you are done with this. Cool? Mm-hmm.
let's see if we can do some real life case studies for our last five minutes. Depends on different banks have different interest rates. All right, so how much is this individual contributing? So let's say, okay, let's say you have a thousand dollars, you started working, and then every month you save $200. That sounds pretty reasonable. Probably it will be more than that. Let's say every month you save $200 at 5% for 10 years. You'd make 32000 However, let's say you get a bonus. You have $10,000 right now. And every month, minimum wage is what, like 16 ish mm -hmm. So full-time minimum wage, you'll make $1,800. After taxes, probably around $1,600. So you can save $800 as a part-time um, worker. Over a period of 10 years, look at this you make 138000 So if you want to buy a house, which is around 500 k right now, even 20 years wouldn't be enough at this rate anyways, at this rate. Usually when you buy a house, you get a loan from the bank for a period of 25 years for most cases. And that kind of adds up because a house, the median price is about 500,000 in most cities. Obviously, if you go to Toronto or Vancouver, it's going to be close to a million. But in most cities, it's about 500,000. And you can use these calculators to do it as well. 5% is not a good rate, to be honest. This is a rate that most banks give you. You're better off investing it in something else. In something like this. It's a little bit risky, but this is like you, um, GIC stands for, well, this is not risky at all. GICs are not risky. It in, stands for guaranteed. So you'll always make some money out of this. You'll never lose it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you put it into stocks, S&P 500 is like the top 500 companies in the U.S. This is very, very um good it's very stable so th this is like the stock exchanges of the top 500 companies so even if one or two go down you're good but let's let's let me show you some stocks um so apple is a good one historically because over the last five years it's what tripled look at this it was 51 now it's like it's more than tripled so this is good but at the same time, you get something like this. This one is terrible. So five years ago, it's 380. Right now, it's one. So it's more than halved over the last five years. So Boeing. It used to be super stable, this one, back in the, up until 2000s, it was very stable. Do you know why this jumped down? Something happened here with this plane. The plane crashed. I don't know if you heard about it a few years ago. Mm -hmm. They they had a new plane. Um, it was this plane. Two of them crashed right here. Right here is when two of them crashed. That's why the stocks went down. And the competitor of Boeing is Airbus. What do you think happened to Airbus's stock? it went up. So five years ago it was 121. Not by much, to be honest. Not by much. But one company's loss is another company's gain. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the top two. And in fact, the only two um, plane manufacturers in the world. So yeah. All right, let's call it there for today. Okay, thank you. See ya.